feel after you've had a helping plate full of the news? Do you feel upbeat? Do you feel positive? Do you feel happy? Do you feel motivated, inspired, enlightened? Do you feel free? Or do you feel anxious, depressed, negative, fearful, stressed, worried, paranoid, divisive, judgmental, argumentative, emotionally charged, tribal? It really is a case of you are what you consume with your senses. And we consume the news, maybe some of you don't, but most people consume the news, even if it's only in their, their feeds, their Facebook feeds, Twitter feeds, it's almost like we can't escape it. Or we just hear it at, with the workplace or friends, family, it's something, and especially in today's climate, it is always there. It is palpable. It's hard to escape it. And um, purporting that for mental and physical health, we need to be very, very selective on how much we consume and the quantity, not only quantity, but the quality of what we consume because there is so much garbage out there of news that sole desire is to get you to click, to get your attention, to get you to watch, to propagandize you, to give you a corporate narrative, a mainstream narrative, the governmental narrative. And it really indoctrinates us into a mindset of obedience through fear. When people are fearful, they're much easier to manipulate and control. We've seen this in the past couple of years. And it's nice just to take a deep breath. And how we think of our diet, we want to eat cleanly. We want to consume cleanly. And it's incredible how much junk food we take in through our ears and through our eyes. It's nonstop and it's become normalized. And that's the scary thing. At least with you go to McDonald's, you realize, OK, I'm eating fast food or you go to a fast food place. You, you know what you're getting with news today. Most people of us are not discerning and will consume whatever it is because it has the label as being news without us realizing it's not really news. There is an agenda. There is an ideology. There is a purpose for them to get you to believe what they want and what benefits them the powers that be and it's so important to protect yourself from that and be a free thinker and i notice in today's emotionally charged political climate oftentimes when i'm talking to people and especially when it comes about cultural things or politics they're just regurgitating what they've heard on the news, on their social feed, on mainstream corporate news, which is like, oh, corporate news is owned by like six companies. I think like 80, 90% of it is owned by six companies, which is incredible. And, or corporations. <clears throat> and for us, yeah, it's not good for our soul. It's not good for our heart. It's not good for our mind. And it has such a detrimental, um, detrimental effect in, in many areas of our lives. And so what's the option? What's the alternative? Important thing that I've done is to really be selective about my news sources, seek out independent journalists. You might have to go to other channels because or other resources or other websites because there's so much censoring going on this day and age. And 
figure out who is independently reporting. Like somebody I really enjoy is Kim Iverson. I feel like she's, uh, she's very independent minded, minded, will not compromise her values and really has a hunger to know what the truth is and will stand up in the face of criticism and, and vitriol. And that's something that I really admire that somebody is independent and their focus is on the facts and the truth and not trying to manipulate me or give me propaganda. And so it's really important to be discerning and take care of your overall <laughs> mental health and, and physical health. And news is really addictive. There's something emotionally charged and like, oh yeah, you know, my side's winning, their side's losing, you know, the us versus them. It's also like a soap opera. There's so much drama, there's so much nonsense, there's so much superficial BS that goes on. And a lot of people like that because it gives you that dopamine hit, it's exciting but it's very fleeting and it leaves us with a hangover. When I watch the news, especially if I watch too much or if I don't really vet my sources, I have that feeling of a hangover. Even when I watch good quality sources, I have to limit it. And that's something I've struggled with and something I'm working on because if I don't limit it. It just is like a dark cloud that hangs over me because what the focus is, the focus is on the negative. They've tried to have feel good news channels and they just don't succeed. They don't last because people aren't interested in feel good stories or good news. It, our brains are hardwired to focus on the negative, to focus on the things that could be a potential threat to us. And so, News, especially corporate news, capitalizes in this with the flashing headlines, with the, the background music, dong, 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 and the fear mongering and the, <laughs> the stress inducing topics that they discuss. And usually it's just so one sided and, and biased that you can't, it's not even trustworthy. So, Keep that in mind and ask yourself, are you addicted to the news? Is it something that you just can't help yourself? You know, we look at alcohol addiction as a negative thing, smoking, gambling, cell phone addiction, but the news has that tendency and it has been designed to be very addictive and overly stimulating. M most people struggle with just reading books these days. And that's something that I help my clients with. I'm a affordable life coach, been doing it for 12 and a half years now, and everybody benefits from it. It's amazing how much of a positive impact when you have someone supporting you and getting your value system in alignment with your habits and your actions and your goals. It really makes a huge difference. And if you're interested, the, just email me my email's in the description and the consultation's absolutely free. And after that, it's incredibly affordable. What has happened in our society today is we become atomized. A great book on this topic is uh, The Psychology of Totalitarianism. It's a must read for everybody. Doesn't matter which side of the aisle that you fall, read it with an open mind, but it is really well researched and gets us, allows us to see things from a different perspective that you're not going to hear when you're talking with family and friends or when you're watching stuff, uh, especially corporate or more mainstream type of news. And what we want is just to become an independent thinker and think for ourselves and have a set of convictions that were hungry after truth and not dogma. And it really opens 
one that book opens one's eyes is what the agenda is and how manipulated how easily the masses are manipulated we are easily manipulated especially if we're induced into a state of fear and you could just look at the historical evidence for this and what what that leads to it leads to tragedies extermination of people and just atrocities so it's important for us to read books instead of picking up your phone pick up a kindle pick up a book it makes such a big difference and you feel so much better about yourself and you feel so much more educated and enlightened you do have to choose good quality books but that's pretty easy to do you could read samples online and there's reviews but reading is such an it's becoming a lost habit and ability for most people and so that's one of the things that we could do is so we're not taking away the news we're just replacing it with something much better and high quality yeah it's not like eating chocolate cake and ice cream and potato chips but it's like eating a healthy meal it's like eating your vegetables and a healthy carb and a lean protein and it just it's calming as well after reading books i just noticed my stress levels and anxiety is really calm and feeling just more grounded the other problem with news is it's constantly available it's the access we have to it is never ending and it's really hard to escape it and so there's blockers you can put you can if you watch the news on a particular channel you know sign in to your youtube channel or whatever you use in, in a private mode so you're not seeing all the the constant flow of the news things that you normally watch and just realize this is not good for me you know maybe in small doses and we'll get to that uh the, the talked about this but the quality of the news is really really poor really poor just like the quality of our food is steadily uh, degrading the focus is on clicks the focus is on catchy sound bites the focus is on dramatic headlines and short superficial content and not depth if you spend more time and it's something hey i still want to read the news there are alternatives like i said there's some great resources there's some great youtube uh, channels and uh, rumble channels and um, alternative sites like uh, substack is a great resource to to reading the news and long form articles you know search those out and try to just detect what the bias is and read both sides of the issue and that's something i listen to news independent news channels that are on the left i listen to independent news channels that are on the right and it really gives me a healthy per perspective the main thing when we're watching news is question everything be a critical thinker and educate yourself don't be dependent on being spoon-fed that's why reading books and getting a wide variety just like a wide variety of food in your diet a, a wide variety of sources is really essential the focus on news is most of the news is not even applicable to us it's something that happened for thousands hundreds of miles away where we it's something we can't control we can't affect we can't impact it doesn't affect our lives and it's just stimulation it's like that soap opera soap opera that curiosity to see what tragedies have happened what catastrophes have happened and maybe it makes us feel oh well my life's not so bad and that's uh, an addictive element of the news is we need to see something negative in order to appreciate our lives why is that and it doesn't need to be like that that's why just having a heart of gratitude is so important and might even help you wean off the news when i watch independent news sources i really 
focus on what their what topics and what issues would personally affect me or affect the community or affect the family and focus on those if it's something that i can take action on it's much more empowering and i'm not wasting my time with just drama senseless drama and and fear and stress and just negativity that negativity really does impact us and it lasts throughout the day crazily enough a lot of people start their day with the news some people even watch the nighttime news and and end their day with the news and man just read something spiritual read something uplifting go for a walk there's so many so much more good uses of our time so try to focus on news that is actionable and that you can have an impact maybe volunteering in your community maybe donating to a cause and not just this, the mental stimulation of something dramatic. News creates a fear, fear-based state. It, it greatly exaggerates the risks. When you watch the news, there was a time in the early 2000s where uh, Elizabeth Smart, she was a, a girl from Utah who got kidnapped out of her house really sad story she ended up living they ended up rescuing her and catching the guy it was actually a couple and, and, and they caught them but that's all you would see on the news you would see the story about her and you'd see the story then there were some other kidnappings and people started like don't leave your child outside don't let them go alone and there was mass paranoia and hysteria why? Because it was on the news. Statistically, people have a much greater chance of dying in a car accident or uh, an, a health, you know, like heart disease, diabetes, cancer. And statistically, getting kidnapped is infinitely small. But when the news is constantly bombarding us with that, it puts us in panic mode, scares us. And when we're fearful, we make irrational decisions. And that's part of the design is to create a fearful populace because they're more compliant. They're, they're more passive and they're more obedient. So just keep, keep that in mind that the, the news really does exaggerate the threat level. And it's also something that is capitalized on, you know, threat level red, threat level orange, threat level yellow. It just puts people in a, this state of hysteria, unnecessarily so. News is also designed to conquer and divide us. And that, that's the part that's really scary because if we're fighting amongst each other, the powers that be can control and manipulate us because our focus is on, the, on warring with each other. And having these culture wars and these these hot topic issues that we take up and we're passionate we're excited about meanwhile our money gets inflated away and just other really meaningful stuff is being able to be perpetuated without our realizing it because we're so focused on the right the left democrat republican and instead of focusing on, hey, we are all part of the United States, let's stay united and let's stay focused on what is most important to us. And what's most important to us is having food on our, on our table, having a roof over our head, having a family, having people that, and friends and, that care about and love us, having experiences that make us feel good having hobbies that we enjoy, having spiritual pursuits, having educational pursuits, growing and evolving as human beings. I'd say most everybody wants those things. And yet we get so stirred up to fight with each other that we take our eye off, off the prize, off the goal. And that's when a lot of bad things can occur because our focus is not right. 
and we're focusing on things that are not as meaningful to financial security, financial health, and uh, emotional health, emotional stability. We're focused on our side winning. And then we other the other side. We other them. We ostracize them. We demean them. We dehumanize them. We call, we call them deplorables. We call them extremists. We call them racists. We call them all kinds of names. And, and on the, the other side as well, you know, there, there's labels that are thrown around and it's just designed to dehumanize each other. And what is the benefit of that? The, bene the, the, the cost of that is absolutely huge because divided we fall and we can't focus on the things that, that connect us, that make us say, hey, even though we have difference, political differences, let's stand together and let's support each other. Let's support freedom of speech. Let's support helping one another. Let's support lifting each other up. Let's support having healthy discourse, even when we disagree. I love talking to people that disagree with me, as long as they don't get hysterical and emotional, which can often happen and try to shut me down. But we, I can learn a lot. I want to understand the other side. You. Sh God, who said this, but there's a quote that you should know the other side's argument better than they know it. And there's something very illuminating about it because it helps me to get into the psychology and the, and the mental mindset of people that I might disagree with. And I'm, it's just having a curious mind, wanting to learn and not shut people down because you disagree with them. That's not the answer. And then it becomes an echo chamber where you're just talking to people that already believe how you believe. How does that sharpen us? How does that refine us? How does that turn us into better, more well-rounded, educated people who have can see both sides of the issue and perspective? It's so important. So don't let them do that. And the way they do that is through news, through propaganda. And just fear is such a great way to control people. And then also news is just fear, gloom, doom, alarm, alarmist headlines. And it's just so manipulative to tap into our evolutionary pers perspective. I'll read you a quote from uh, Dr. Tyler Jones at Banner Behavioral Health Hospital. He said, from an evolutionary perspective, there used to be an advantage to paying attention to news that was alarming or depressing. But now those same tendencies are exploited to increase our engagement in the news, make more money off of us that may and usually are not useful to us. And that just really illuminates why the news is so addictive to us. Okay, just give me a moment while we go through a little, uh, some other talking points. News alters us from a neutral state to a stressed and anxious state. You can feel it. I feel it. I feel it in my chest. You might feel it in your shoulders. You might feel it in your head. You, you might also feel it in your chest or in your stomach. But when you're watching the news, pay attention to how you physically feel, how you respond to the news because it's, it's concerning because your brain is sending a fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response when you're reading, when you read the news and you're fearful, you go into a fear, fearful state. And that has consequences. I even notice it affect, it can affect my sleep. Even if it's news I watch earlier in the day, if it's something that's concerning, worrying, and anxiety provoking. So according to the same Dr. Uh, Tyler Jones, news leads to eating and especially like emotional eating. 
we turn to food when we don't feel a sense of deep inner calm and peace. And that's one of my focuses in life coaching is, yes, goals and habits and all those things are important, but the most important thing is for us to feel a deep sense of inner peace and contentment and joy and calm. That's what people want. That's what we want. And yet it's so elusive and it's so concerning how far of a gap we are from that. And I believe technology has only made it significantly worse. We spend much less time connecting with people, connecting with nature, engaging in hobbies, engaging in meaningful experiences, volunteering, doing things to help the community, being a part of the community, just even going for walks. And that's one of my focuses for the clients that are willing and wanting that in life coaching. Let's focus on creating that deep sense of, of contentment. So it leads to emotional eating. And sometimes we just, we're not even hungry. We're just eating. And you're like, why am I eating? Well, it's a response to stress and anxiety. And you want that serotonin release. And it feels, uh, you get a temporary relief after you eat something. But then you got, you're compounding the problem. You're exposing yourself to negative news. And now we're harming our health through poor dietary choices because usually we're eating carbs and sugar you know or junk food chips uh, dr jones says it can trigger watching the news can trigger waking it can trigger other addictive behaviors like alcohol nicotine or drugs it can increase your blood pressure it raises it can raise your your blood pressure it can lead to abnormal heart rhythms it can cause acid reflux or irritable bowel disease. It can trigger depression and anxiety. Like, yeah, I knew the news was bad, but when I started researching the topic for this video, I didn't know all these things are, all these symptoms or all these health issues are can be caused just by watching the news. And it's really just putting ourselves in a stressed and anxious state. The other thing I alluded to before is confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is when we only expose ourselves to, to information that confirms what we already believe. So if we're watching a news ch channel and it's, let's say it's more to the right. Oh, that's just right stream. That's right wing stuff. I'm not going to watch that. Or it's to the left. Oh, that's left wing you know, nonsense. I'm not going to watch that. Again, be discerning. There are some good, really good sources on the left and right if you do uh, want to watch that. Um, but confirmation bias is a real thing. And the most important thing when I'm coaching clients and just for your edification and growth is have a curious mind. Be curious. Want to learn even if you disagree. I want to understand and learn and grow and evolve and know how people think and a curious mind really allows ourselves to do that and if you're just watching what's in your feed your feed your whether it's a twitter feed a facebook feed a youtube feed it's go only going to show you stuff that is similar to things that you like or things that you've watched so you're not going to get the other side and that's why we become such a divided country because we get only we primarily get exposed to things that confirms what we believe and how helpful is that if we're constantly just sho shoveling into our brain information that agrees with what we believe it's not we need to be challenged we need to hear alternatives and we need to be exposed to different ways of thinking and different ideas now there's a limit to it i know everybody okay hey this when they start talking about when the right starts talking about this, I don't agree. Or when the left starts talking about this, you know, you might say, I don't agree with that. I don't see the benefit. At least try to understand it. So if you do encounter it, maybe you could have an, an enlightening and illuminating educational debate about it. The most, oh, here's a great quote about the confirmation bias from Warren Buffett. He says, what the human being is best at doing 
is interpreting all new, new information so that their prior conclusions remain intact. I'll repeat that. What human being, the human being is best at doing is interpreting all new information so that their prior conclusions remain intact. And that's what it is. We don't want to let go of what, what we believe is right. We want to feel like we are right. What we believe is right and they're wrong. Um, and then re concluding this topic, news is just a waste of time and energy. Now I do, wa I, like I said, I want to watch it, but I want to be very disciplined. It's like having cake and ice cream. I don't want to be eating cake and ice cream every day. I want to be disciplined and in small doses. And that's something that I've struggled with in the past and I'm gradually shifting towards. But it's, a, it's like, if you want to look at it like, hey, I need to uh, watch the news or I find it entertaining, you know, you could use it as a, as a treat, uh, you know, once in a while. And everyone has their different limit. You know, you could say, okay, you can have news-free days. You can say, I'm going to watch X amount of hours per week of the news or X amount of hours per day. But I, I like the, the idea of just like, hey, these Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the weekends are news free, or Tuesday and Thursday and the weekends are news free days. You have to find out what works for you and then track it. Track it uh, on a habit tracker or on a calendar or something and see how it makes you feel cutting down exposure to the news. A great book on this topic is titled Stop Reading the News A Manifesto of a happier, calmer, and wiser life. And I think his first, the, I, I should have written down the author, but I didn't. I think his first name is Rolf, R-O-L-F, if I'm not mistaken. If you know, you could just put it in the comments, but you could find it by the title, Stop Reading the News, A Manifesto for a Happier, Calmer, and Wiser Life. Great book, highly recommend it. Some people wanna go cold turkey, and that's the most effective way when there's addictive habits that we have and we just can't get them under control, going cold turkey is an option. Or you could try it. I'm going to go cold turkey for a week or two weeks and see how it affects your life. Um, yeah, but if you do, please stick to Substack, long form articles, independent YouTube channels from both sides or in-depth podcasts much, much better. And wrapping up, news is a complete, no, nah, listen, yeah, that's extreme. News is a waste of time and energy. It consumes, especially how much most people spend towards it, it consumes so much time and energy. And that time and energy, we could be working on a spiritual practice. We could be spending time with family and friends, going hiking, having hobbies, reading books, working on our career growth, Sleeping or napping, sleeping or napping is, is wonderful. Most of us are sleep deprived. Instead of watching the news, take a short nap. Going on walks, learning, and having incredible life experiences. Life experiences can be wonderful just going outside of your, your house and, and maybe engaging with people. There's a lot of magical moments just watch, I just love watching squirrels or watching the birds or talking to a stranger. So there's a lot of stuff that we could do that doesn't mean we have to, it has to be extravagant or we have to travel, but there's a lot of rewarding things that we can do on a daily basis that doesn't involve screens. Thanks, if you made it this far, I appreciate it. And if you would like affordable life coaching, like I said, just, shoot me an email. It is in the description. Consultation is free. If you'd like to support this channel and see more videos like this, these videos take time and are, are very time consuming. So any support you could give the channel is greatly appreciated. And there's a PayPal link in the description. And I would like to know what your thoughts are on the news. Do you feel like it's something positive? Do you feel like it's something negative in your life? And how, what do you feel the optimum 
usage of news is, is for you personally. Yeah, I just found I had what kind of inspired this video, although I've, you know, reading that book, I read that book a, a little while back, but I had watched the news again, even on independent sources, an independent source, and it was just like fear, panic, and I noticed my sleep was significantly impacted after watching that. So it was just like a wake up call. Be very discerning on what you take in with your senses. Thanks for watching. I wish you a peaceful, content, simple life. And I'm here to support you in that if you should need it. And look forward to the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.